Here we see a horse enjoying his lunch on a nice sunny day 5,000 years ago. Floating around and greatly exaggerated in size are carbon dioxide molecules consisting of a carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. Through the process of photosynthesis, the carbon dioxide is absorbed by the plant life in this picture. As a result of a chemical reaction involving water, the carbon in carbon dioxide is converted into hydrocarbons, molecules made of carbon and hydrogen atoms, the building blocks of organic life. The oxygen is released, but then breathed in by the horse. When the horse consumes the hydrocarbons by eating the plant life, some of that carbon is breathed out as carbon dioxide, re-entering the atmosphere, but some is used to build the organic molecules in the body of the horse. So the plants and the horse have something in common. They are made of carbon that comes ultimately from the air. The vast majority of carbon in the air is what we would call ordinary carbon. It has six electrons and has a nucleus made of six protons and six neutrons. Since the neutron and proton are very similar in mass, and since they are both much heavier than electrons, we say that ordinary carbon has an atomic weight of 12 units. If you had a mole of this regular carbon, containing six times 10 to the 23rd atoms, it would weigh about 12 grams. However, a tiny fraction of the carbon dioxide in the air also has a heavier radioactive version of the carbon atom in it. This is known as carbon-14. The atom behaves the same from a chemical perspective. It has six electrons and six protons. However, it has eight neutrons total, so it is slightly heavier than ordinary carbon. This strange carbon nucleus is unstable, and it can radioactively decay. The amount of radioactive carbon in the atmosphere 5,000 years ago was roughly 1.5 parts per trillion. This means if you have 1.5 trillion or 1.5 thousand billion carbon dioxide molecules, one of them will be radioactive. That's not that many. We can adjust this amount with a slider here. Notice that it turns green when we get to the realistic value. We allow you to vary this amount just to see what would happen but remember that the real value is in green. Each nucleus of radioactive carbon has a random chance of decaying, producing nitrogen in any given amount of time. We define the radioactive half-life as the amount of time, on average, we'd have to wait for half of the existing radioactive carbon nuclei to decay. The realistic value is 5,730 years. And you can see when you adjust the slider for half-life, it will turn green. We allow you to vary this just to see what would happen, but remember that the real value is in green. The equation at left shows how radioactive carbon is created. In the Earth's upper atmosphere is ordinary hydrogen gas, the main constituent of the air we breathe. Cosmic rays from outer space strike the other upper atmosphere and create showers of fundamental particles. One of these particles, a neutron, can strike a nitrogen nucleus and cause it to turn into radioactive carbon. Notice that this process releases a proton, or hydrogen nucleus. As a living creature goes about its business, it continues to bring radioactive carbon into its system, the plants through photosynthesis, and the animals by eating living plants. However, the moment a plant or animal dies, it ceases to consume this radioactive carbon. This means, because these nuclei are unstable, the amount it contains will start decreasing from this maximum amount. The moment you die, whether you are a plant or animal, is the moment when the concentration of radioactive carbon in you is the highest it will ever be. Let's watch history unfold. As we can see in the graph, the ratio of radioactive carbon to ordinary carbon is decreasing. This is an exponential decrease, dropping by half every 5,730 years. After 5,730 years, it is half of its starting value. After twice this time, 11,470 years, it is one quarter of its initial value. You might find this surprising. If it loses half in 5,730 years, shouldn't it lose the rest in the second 5,730 years? The answer to this is no. 
Given any amount of radioactive carbon, since each decays independently of one another, half will decay in 5,730 years. If you already have half the original amount, this simply drops to one quarter. The equation at left shows how the radioactive carbon decays. This type of decay is known as a beta decay because it produces an electron, which is also known as a beta particle. A neutrino is also released, as is a nitrogen nucleus. I hope this simulation has been helpful to you.